Hey, Josh. Hey there. Done. Hello there. Hey everybody, we'll get started in just a minute. Let's see if anyone else is joining. Or not. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone. Um, this is the SIG Contributor Strategy Meeting for the CNCF. Um, uh, we are, uh, as a CNCF committee, we are subject to the CNCF Code of Conduct. So be nice. Um, and um, uh, and also, this meeting is being recorded um, for the CNCF archives. Uh, so please be aware of that. Um, and with that, um, let's go ahead and get started. Make sure that you put your name down in the minutes. Um, let me paste that again into the chat. Um, we don't appear to have um, any guests from projects with issues or looking for guidance today. Um, so we will go through the normal um, agenda um, of, of subcommittee stuff, et cetera. Um, uh, unless somebody has something else urgent. If you have something non-urgent, just put it under other in the um, agenda. Okay, so maintainer circle, uh, apparently Paris can't make it to the meeting today. She added some notes. Um, uh, February 28th is the next scheduled maintainer circle event. Um, the, um, she, she needs to ask Celeste and Stephen for structure. I don't know who those are. Apparently they're the presenters. Um, the, um, and she needs to send her a notice about that. Um, does anybody else know anything about what's going on with that? No, sorry. Okay. Um, the um, <clears throat> so um, oh hey now I can actually see everybody. The um, hey Charles, hey April, hey, April had a good time off. Oh good. It was nice. It was inspired by Carolyn. So thank you, Carolyn. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, governance, we're just getting started for the year. We have our usual sort of slate of content that we're still trying to produce um, for project governance, et cetera. Um, the one sort of bit of news we have is um, the elections, online elections application is almost complete. Um, uh, the project will belong to CNCF Infra after that. So not a CNCF project um, because it's not cloud native. 
um, but but one um, supported by CNCF staff and available to um, CNCF and Linux Foundation projects. Um, for those who weren't following around with it, it's a um, preference election application that works entirely off of um, defined OAuth. Um, I, so that projects can have things like steering committee elections. Um, and it's a useful replacement. Uh, Linux Foundation is offering access to something through LFX, but that thing is a proprietary elections application um, that costs money every time you use it. Um, and as a result would be more restricted for projects. So um, having a free and open source option um, is helpful. Um, I don't know whether or not the CNCF will be offering instantiations of this because the project is just the code. Um, it's not a running instance, um, particularly because you need a running instance of it for each project. The way we set it up, we decided trying to do multi-tenant was going to be painful and therefore we just didn't do it. Um, uh, so it's going to be up to the CNCF whether or not they launch instances of these for the projects. Yeah. What elections will it be used for? Um, so we just used it, for example, for the Kubernetes steering committee to select their general board representative. Um, and the main goal in doing this project was to allow, was to support the annual Kubernetes and open telemetry steering committee elections. Um, so, so yeah, those sorts of elections. I think it's, isn't it like anybody that, basically if you're doing elections that are based on eligibility defined via GitHub, yeah, that this is like your lifesaver. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, right. And it doesn't even necessarily need to be GitHub if you're willing to add another OAuth provider. True, true. yeah. The, the only one we've included in the code is GitHub, but it's, we're using the generic Python OAuth library. So anything that that supports could potentially be a provider. So, yeah, and mostly this came out of my pain with sieves. You know, I ran a number of elections using sieves, and it was, oh my God, I am just never doing this again. So, this is the email hell. Yes. Yeah. So, um, if someone yeah. wants to do an election, because um, you said it's not hosted, they'll need to set right. it up and run it for the duration of the election somewhere. Yeah. And so, what I'm hoping is, and one of the things we should discuss in the next governance meeting is once it's 100% finished, um, which it's not quite yet. I mean, I would say the code will be done in around two weeks and then we need to finish the documentation. Um, I, the, um, that um, once it's completely finished, um, I'm thinking that we need to discuss some governance that we send a request to the CNCF saying, hey, it would be nice if you offered this to projects to spin it up because the yeah. project will be providing say a um a kubernetes suitable container image um but it won't be free because you need a database on the back end um i i it's configured currently to use mysql could be anything that sql alchemy supports um the um and you know, and a cloud hosted database costs money. So the, um, um, so it'll be kind of, we can send a recommendation that it'll be up to the CNCF staff to decide um, what they can reasonably support there. Um, and part of it's gonna be honestly based on demand, right? Um, uh, if I were Amy or Ehor or whoever, what I would probably do is see how many projects request it. Yeah, makes sense. The, um, so, um, but yeah, you have to instantiate it and run it somehow. Um, and we've been running it since for test purposes for the last three months. Um, and I'm probably overpaying because I don't understand the Google cloud system very well. Um, but I think it's costing about 90 bucks a month. Most, mostly because of the hosted database. The um, 
Um, Don, do we have anything else for governance? I don't think we've really done anything else in a month. <laughs> Everybody's been on holiday. Yeah. Don, I okay. love the new hair color, Mark. Oh, thanks. I got it kind of more purple over the holidays. I love it. Thanks. I love it. Okay, contributor growth. Carolyn? Yeah, um, this is kind of our status from last week when we met. We are in the middle of interviewing um, projects. We've done four so far that I'm aware of for contributor framework. Um, but I don't really know much more beyond that. I don't know, um, Charles, if you have more info on that, maybe. I'm gonna throw you into the bus. I'm sorry, if you don't, that's fine. Yeah, No, no, sorry. Was somebody is on our fire escape and it is I was not told this was going to be happen, so happening so uh, I have no idea what you just said oh I was just wondering if you if you had more information about the interviews that we're running right now for the contributor framework if you know how yeah. far we are yeah yeah so Catherine I believe is done with the interviews I've reviewed her doc with my notes um, so I know that she's looking for input from other folks as well. Uh, I think the doc is linked in the meeting notes. And um, I am going to set up a meeting with her to um, to uh, teach her how to make a pull request. So that's, uh, that's why it's not in GitHub yet, but she's looking for reviews in Google Docs. I just updated it with the link to it. Um, it, it's really good. There's a whole bunch. I haven't had a chance to, to read it yet. Yeah. Yeah. She, she and I walked through it. So it's, it's looking good. It's in shape. I think it's got a lot of good feedback in there. Um, yeah, I think overall she's looking for information about whether it's too specific, not specific enough, um, you know, looking for the right amount of, uh, prescriptiveness, I guess is the right word. Okay. Um, the other thing is the contributor ladder. I owe Karen, Karen um, review and really just more content, yeah. a little more can, can you, editing. Sure. Can you link that again? Um, because it's not a pull request, so. No, yeah, you're right. Let me find that one sec. And um, while she's looking for that, I um, just wanted to call out that Harris updated go. in the notes that January 28th is the next maintainer circle, not February 28th. Oh. No. Okay. Today I play the role of Paris Pittman, which happens a lot anyway. Yeah. So I just added a link to the contributor ladder. We have a draft in um, our repository that Karen started it off. Um, I think I think it needs just another round of uh, like editing and, and a little bit of maybe cleaning up the text a bit. Um, but please take a look too uh, and submit a PR if you have more changes you'd like. We also discussed starting an onboarding guide and also a reviewing guide. We're tracking this under our content issue. So I wasn't gonna make extra ones for that. I don't know how we're doing things, Josh, if you want individual ones for each piece of content. Um, the, um, I, you know, I don't know, whatever works for you. The, um, actually probably ones for each piece because we might say, oh wait, this one is not quite ready. Um, and it's a lot more helpful to actually have a separate issue for that. Okay. Um, because otherwise think, you're combing through all of the comments to try to figure out which things we're actually approving. Yeah, yeah, we've just been updating the app, um, but I can yeah. switch it out and split all those into issues. Um, yeah, so. That's, that's what contributor growth is kind of doing at the moment. I don't know if anyone has any questions, otherwise I can jump right to the website. Um, 
Yeah, go go ahead and jump to the website. I'm just looking at this. Sure. So I made a proof of concept for the website and um, I opened up a PR because I'd like to get it into our repo so I don't have to keep merging in changes. Um, okay. I had so what'll, happen, what'll happen to the tiny amount of content that's currently in the contribute repo? And, and sorry, you, in what? So there is a little bit of content as in basically two pages in the other repo. It's in the website. Have you seen it lately? Yeah, but I thought the website was drawing from that contribute repo currently. It is at the moment. It's a, it's a my own personal fork. I don't feel like I have license to make changes to anything yet. Um, if that's not true, please tell me, because then I won't be maintaining forks and kind of doing weird things. Um, okay, um, I'm gonna say I. Um, Ehor can verify this, but as far as I know, you have um, all of the necessary authorization. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, as long as as long as the the existing content is still there in some form, it'll be in the exact same spot. There'll just be extra files and uh, YAML yeah, yeah, the data. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Cool. Um, what I wanted to ask about is the current, um, and this is all in the issue, I'm just gonna read through it. I made the minimum required changes to make pulling in the content from the contribute repo, the existing one work. But to be honest right now, it's made to be read from GitHub and it isn't uh, following any of the conventions of Hugo, which is how yeah. we're generating the site. I'd like to change that mm -hmm. so that people, obviously added it on GitHub, but it's meant to be viewed on um, Hugo and it would just remove yes. a lot of hacks. Yep. Great. That'd be awesome. Okay. Um, yeah. I think it looks awesome. really good. I Sorry. like this. I was just, you know, playing with it. It looks really good. I like oh, it. Good. Thank you for doing this. I, I do have one um, correction that I'll send over for gRPC, the primary language. Um, but other than that, everything looks great. Okay. Yeah. If you need to change anything, I suggest just doing it against the, the real canonical repo on the main branch. At the okay. Moment. So should I just wait until it's not a big deal? So like I can just wait until everything is set up repo. I, mean, I, I would just submit your PR. Let's get it merged, changed. Okay. And then, then when I do a final merge and match up with everything that's in there, um, you know, it'll just incorporate your change. Uh, my stuff is definitely out of date. I haven't Done a merge um, in the past like two weeks. So okay, yeah. Cool. Oh, so when, when, when do you plan? Okay. Uh, so Caroline, when do you plan to complete your job with with the website, like to merge everything into into one single space? Um. So we still have. The, there's always going to be two repositories. There's our SIGs repository, and then there's this contribute repository. Yeah. I haven't merged them together. I didn't plan to. Um. I wanted to get the POC that I have in the main branch so that it's not, I'm not carrying the burden of merging constantly. Um, and then I'm making sure that anyone can make edits. So this isn't like a, like it needs to be finished the editing experience. Um, so I think I'm almost there. And then the question would be, what do we need to do to switch um, so that Netlify is serving um, that URL? Um, I'm not sure it's probably the direct, uh, so we have the contribute.cncf.io, which is directly routing to, to GitHub. Uh, I'm not sure how it is exactly set up. Uh, this has been done by LFIT, I assume. So we'll have to submit the, uh, the LFIT ticket to change that. Or you can you can redirect directly. Uh, you can you can submit your changes directly to CNCF contribute repo, and in this case, it should just work. So when I submit the changes to our, both of our repos, so that both mains have all the website content in it, um, I'm just talking about that final redirect, so it doesn't go to the root of the repository; it goes to this website on Netlify. Can I open a service desk ticket for that, or? 
uh, better just shoot me an email because we'll have to circulate on that internally. Or yeah, you can do a service desk ticket actually. Any anyway, let's do the service desk ticket, the CNC service desk ticket, and we'll we'll figure out internally what Great. to do here. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, I will. I will do that then. There's like a couple things just to make sure everyone knows how to contribute, and then um, I'll submit those PRs uh, for tomorrow. Perfect. Oh my gosh, I see KubeCon spring there and I'm terrified. <laughs> okay. Okay, so wait, so the the actual, the um, all of the markdown files and stuff, those are going to live in the contribute repo or they're going to live in the SIG contributor strategy repo or where? Um, so what I, I'm taking advantage of the fact that Hugo can pull in content from multiple locations. Yeah. So the website, we have two links. They say, I'm right. a maintainer, I'm a contributor, okay? If you say, I'm a maintainer, it's taking to, to a section of the website that's populated by our content in our SIG repo and that'll keep going, you know? Um, what I recommend we do is instead of having draft folders, we just mark it as draft and it won't display on the website, but it'll live in its final destination, you know, in GitHub, just fine, you, um, which will be great. How, how do you mark something as draft? It's uh, YAML metadata, just a little- Okay, in the, the, in the header of the page. The yeah, you just basically say draft true and it won't, it won't render that page. Okay. You're saying market is a draft in GitHub though, right? Yeah. Uh, so okay. I don't have like anything that I could just like squ switch for a trick to show you. So like when you write a, a web page for the yeah. website, at the very top, there's just a little bit of YAML and it has a couple of fields like what's the title, things like that. What's the description? And one of them that we can use is draft. And what that means is when we publish the website to production, that page won't be included. Gotcha. It'll still be in GitHub, which is great. We also edit it and see it. But when someone goes to contribute at CNCF, they won't see it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And then we don't need to keep using that draft folder if we don't want to. If that no, 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 no. If we can do that, it makes sense. Because the yeah. other option obviously would be to have a draft branch. Yeah, I don't think we need to do that. Okay. But we can try it this way and, you know, if we need to change it, everything's changeable. And yep. so as far as the, anything that's on the other link, anything about related to contributing, being a new contributor, things like that, it will show you content from the other website. Um, sorry, the other repository. Uh, and, you know, over time we may want to, right now it's just two giant pages, to be honest. We may want to split that up because now that we have you know, website format. We're not just using GitHub. I think we may be able to present it better. So it's not quite so overwhelming and scrolling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, this is awesome. Um, so, um, you know, you work with Ehor to actually get this made live. Okay. Um, and in the meantime, the rest of us oh. should look at what other sort of content we can get online since we can just push it into our existing folders. Yeah. Um, the um, and and we'll file some issues because I just realized I actually want to make a, um, a subheading under governance. So the um, <clears throat> OK. Cool. Great work. I'm getting very used to looking at doxy sites lately. <laughs> the um, although I admit on my other sites, I'm using doxy Jekyll so that I don't actually have to have a build step. What's doxy Jekyll? Um, it's a set of Jekyll themes that give you the same layout and functionality as doxy. I didn't even um, know that existed. That's awesome. <laughs> and, and the reason to use it is that if you're using Hugo doxy, right, then your CI or on your desktop, you need to go through a build step before publishing. Um, and because Jekyll is run by GitHub itself, you don't, you can skip the build step. Yeah. Well, 
Netlify runs Hugo as well. So Oh, so Netlify is doing the build step for you. Yeah, as an editor, you <coughs> can change it in GitHub. You know, you can just like right click on a file, say add it, and yeah. you know, make one line change and you'll get okay. the full build, everything. You don't need anything on okay, your good. computer. Yeah. Okay. The um yep. Um, but they look the same. So okay. Awesome. So that's where we are on the website. Um, everybody should be contributing to that. Um, the, um, and this now means that if you create a document in your folder, it needs to have a little bit of metadata at the top of it. And it really is a very little bit. Look at the existing pages. Um, OK, so uh, let's move on to um, KubeCon Spring. Um, do we? Um, there's a recommendation there that we should have some kind of a submit some kind of a contributor strategy session. Um, <clears throat> it can be just kind of a tour of you know what we have to offer, et cetera, and what we're working on. Um, or um, you know, do we have a particular topic we can focus on for this one? I was wondering if we'd like to focus on some of the guides that we've finished creating. Yeah, yeah. like have a topic that's about, um, actually, I think Dawn submitted one. <laughs> I, think I saw your proposal, but stuff like that, like some of our, our advisory guides would just make great talks standalone. You know, yeah. How do you do a contributing guide? How do you welcome new contributors? Things like that. Yeah. The, um, I think the I talk mean, that I submitted was about business risk. Um, which governance is a big part of. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. Well, I mean, that would actually kind of have an argument. It wouldn't be a bad thing to f have a session that sort of focuses on contributor growth because that's an area where we've had a lot of questions from projects and it would be a little different from the attempted session that we had um, in the fall. Um, the um, um, and I think would have a lot of interest again from from the sort of target attendees for KubeCon Spring. There's contributor growth is a big area. Do you have any thoughts on? I it would be it would be basically like... sort of an, an overview of how do I get contributors for my CNCF project? Oh, okay, the new um, contributor pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. The um, that's just a thought, right? If you have something something else that you think. Um, would it be bigger? But but that is kind of the question we've been getting from projects. Yeah. You know, how do how do I get contributors? I have this project. It's you know, technically successful, um, uh, but it's like our company and our company's ecosystem. So how do I start getting public contributors? Um, is a big one. Yeah, I saw a lot of submissions actually related to that for. Really. Yeah, for keep okay. on Europe. So I think a lot of people are thinking about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess the question is, do you think any of those submissions pretty much cover that topic so that it doesn't no. make sense for us to do one? Okay. No, I think they're, they're coming from slightly different angles. So yeah. for example, if we covered the new contributor pipeline, um, I don't, am I allowed to talk about this? But I didn't see, I didn't see submissions related to that, um, you know, coming in for- You can, yeah, you know. I, I think- you, I think it's okay for you to talk about it in general. Just don't name anybody um, oh, yeah. or give the exact content of the submission. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that like that would be an area that no one's no one's really submitted anything on to say how do I okay. bring people in? What are good practices? What would a contributor ladder look like? A contributing guide? Any of those types of things? Um, you know, people are focusing on different areas of contributor growth in their talks. I'm gonna get an angry letter from, oh, it's not Nancy anymore, but <laughs> someone's gonna watch this video and get mad at me. <clears throat> the, um, okay. Um, I, I think that's a good idea. I would, be, I would be in favor of that and willing to help with it. Anyone else? Somebody want to volunteer to lead the drafting process for the submission? Okay. 
Unless someone else really wants to do it, then I want them to do it. <laughs> okay, so I'm channeling Paris and she's not here. Should I just volunteer her for that? No, she would kill me. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Uh -huh. um, I mean, I'm happy to help. I don't know that I want, I don't know. I don't know that I have the expertise to, you know, be the lead on the submission, but I'm happy to help wherever I can. Okay, I'll maybe get a couple different <clears throat> ideas and what we need, we can meet and kind of see which one seems. Yeah, we can fun. just like flesh it out and do a brainstorming, yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. The, um, okay. Um, the one other thing that we have on our agenda, uh, Paris put in, if there's no comments or suggestions for graduated guidance and templates, TOC should begin their approval process. Um, so the, um, I guess the question is, what is that approval process? And we're going to have to bug Matt and Saad. Yeah, which I, she sent an email, didn't she, like recently to them? Yeah, she sent an email and I, I've, the, um, I would really like as much as possible to not have a full TOC vote every time we want to publish a document. Agreed. Um, the, um, I, th I think, um, I think maybe I should comment on that proposal and suggest that, hey, if it's a non-controversial topic, either Matt or Sad or their replacements from the TOC should be able to just approve it. Could we mm -hmm. just use lazy consensus? We just put it out there and if no one says anything after a week, it goes? Um, I would like to have somebody who's sitting on the TOC approve it just so that we don't end up in the situation where we publish something and then somebody in the TOC takes exception to it. Yeah. Slightly yeah. lazy consensus. You just need one person. <laughs> Just, just one, but yeah, I think it can be just one person, right? Yeah. Um, the, um, um, so, um, the, um, uh, like, I wonder, like, what's the process for approvals if there's a, um, like, change in the TOC repo? Like, surely they don't all have to approve no. every PR. So, like, can't we just copy that same process for our stuff? The, um, yeah, I mean, honestly, the the actual physical promotion gets done by the CNCF staff um, who do it based on judgment, I guess, is whether or not the TOC approved something. Um, so, um, you know, and, and pretty much everything going into the TOC repo does get at least brought up at a TOC meeting. And I'm just saying, you know, hey, if I publish a guide on, you know, if we publish, for example, a new contributor ladder template, that should not need to be approved by the entire TOC. Right, right. Um, you know, it's just not some things, right? Like if we post guidance on um, the multi-organization requirement, et cetera, that probably does need to be approved by the full TOC simply because they've already argued about it. Um, Right. Um, but for most of our documents, they're just, it's just missing documentation. It's not controversial at all. Um, so um, the, um, yeah, I mean, I will say she's not here. I was a little unhappy that Paris push that email to the TOC without having discussed it with anybody in this meeting. Um, but the, um, so we'll have to backpedal now. Well, I mean, are we, the content is still correct. No, the content, right? but she she sent an email to the TOC that included a proposal that the full TOC would vote on every piece of content. Oh, I yeah, I missed that part. I I yeah. just got an email that Matt and Saad needed to give their okay. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was in there, and I was like, oh. So the um. Um. Uh, I think we might want to modify that proposal. Yeah, I mean, I guess ultimately we need the TOC to tell us what they want. I mean, if we're yeah. supposed to be a subgroup of their 
efforts, then yeah. they should tell us how they want yeah. to receive and approve. Okay. Um, I actually need to jump off because um, I need, um, I'm being paged in the etcd community meeting. Um, this, this, uh, I um, will not end if people still have stuff to discuss. Um, but, but I need to jump off. I mean, I think that was the end of the agenda, right? So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thanks for attending, everybody. We'll follow yeah. up on Slack and GitHub. Bye, y'all. Bye bye. bye.